Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jacob Restituto, and I'm a musician from Northport, New York, and I have the pleasure of having Josh B uh, Binder here on the channel with me just to chat, and we're, I'm really looking forward to having you. So thank you so much for taking the time, man. I'm really grateful to have you here. For sure. Happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so for the people that might not know who you are, a little bit of backstory, can you can you just, you know, go a little, give us a little, you know, a little briefing on, on who you are and, sure. and what you do and all that good stuff? Yeah, for sure. So I kind of leave two lives here, you know, two different lives, one being my creative arts passions on making videos on YouTube, doing music reviews, really passionate about international music. Cool. Um, and my other half is being an engineer as my day job. Um, so grew up in Maryland, ended up going to Penn State to get my industrial engineering degree, um, was involved with a lot of the arts there, um, okay. was the communications director for international um, Institute of Industrial Engineers for two years. Nice. Um, 2015, we got the ASA Awards for Rookie of the Year for Greatest uh, K-Pop uh, Music Reactions and uh, Reviews. Wow. Um, so, that, so that's what really launched us. Interesting. So so can you elaborate on that? I don't know what that is. Yep, yep. So there's a huge community of people who just review music for a living. Yeah. Um, and there's even a smaller community that will review just a specific type of music. Okay. Um, and I know in college, um, one of my roommates was very passionate about Korean pop. And okay. so he was really into that. And so he introduced me to it. I hadn't heard a single K-pop song in my life. Okay. So it was really interesting. We got into that. We started making a channel about it. Um, and that was our original channel. And then we all eventually graduated, got jobs. We're in three separate locations. So we all started our solo channels. They all took off. Um, and that's currently what I'm uploading on is my solo channel just under my name, Josh Binder. Um, so were th uh, are they still posting and everything too? No, they, they sort of tapered off. They got busy okay. with life. I was, I was one out of the three that, that kind of kept going. Um, but we, you know, you just have to eventually find what it is that you can individually do. Cause I feel like when you, when you're in a group, you have a completely different dynamic than sure. when you're just doing solo uplets, as you know, you know, sure. it's, it, it brings a whole different dynamic to the channel when you do interviews like this, because you sure. can talk to people interface. Oh, it's so much less lonely, man. <laughs> it is, it is, you know, and, and YouTubing is already can be a lonely journey. You know? Sure, exactly. But anyway, so we did a lot of reactions and reviews, started solo channels. Um, we eventually, I built up an audience to the point where I was um, two-time commentator, panelist, and host for K-pop and K-Con New York and LA. Wow. Um, that was really, a lot, really awesome because I got to meet a lot of these groups that I've been talking about and reviewing their albums. Wow. And I could go, go talk to them and they... They, they sort of have, you've probably heard of Comic-Con, you know, where they have sure, really sure, big sure. events with that. They have a K-Con as well, where they bring in all these famous idols from Korea and they have them, you know, do performances and interviews. And so I was able to interview a lot of them and get face to face. And it was really fun. Wow. Um, you know, and at that time, my channel just peaked at 100K subscribers. And after I did the interviews, I kind of felt like, well, what do I do from here? Like, I feel like it just peaked. You know, so I pivoted a little bit and I started looking at some more international music. So I looked at Vietnamese pop, Bollywood pop. So India, I did Kazakhstan, Russian pop, um, because I was thinking, you know, it'd be cool to just check out some of these other ones that I've never heard sure. of. Before. And I realized that there's all of these really interesting sounds that you don't hear anywhere yeah. else that you can get sure. from those countries. And I'm like, why is no one talking about this? Yeah. So I focused on that for the better part of six months. Um, before moving back down here to Maryland, I was up in New Jersey for a while, um, outside of Manhattan, um, Oh, nice. Cool. moved back down here to Maryland where I'm from, planted some roots, bought a little house, married nice. my wife, <laughs> and we've just been living our solo life. And during the pandemic, I've just been doing a whole lot of DIY now. I'm just doing home renovations. I'm at Home Depot twice a week. Yeah, you just said you uh, just got back from Lowe's 10 minutes ago. I did. I totally did. So if you ever need to do a bathroom renovation, I'm your guy. Bro, wait, when's the DIY channel coming up? We actually have been filming some for it. If you ever follow me on Instagram, I'm posting okay. stories when we're doing like, oh, you know, today we're installing a toilet. <laughs> it's just the funniest thing. But uh, it, it's like, for me, I don't have, I, I'm too ADD to have one interest. You know, sure. I have so many different interests. And so I'm just jumping around all these different things all the time. Yeah. That's how I stay into it. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, 
Yeah, so, so just to answer your question about that. Who were some of the artists that you met when you went to KCON? Yep, so Astro was one of them, 17. Um, let's see, One Million, which is a really popular dance choreography group. Um, also, we're able to see EXO and BTS, if you've ever heard of them. Yeah. Uh, they're more, I guess, more prominent. You saw uh, them or you met those guys too? Met the first three, saw the second two I just mentioned. Cool, okay, yeah. But yeah. That's um, wild, man. So so because of your roommates, you got into like the international stuff. Yeah, were you yeah it all into... started. That's where it started, just having a roommate that was into K-pop. That's you so know, wild, man. I brought it up to him. I was like, have you ever heard of this? Because remember, do you remember back in, what was it, 2012? when Gangnam Style came out. Of course, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Sai, you know, and he's like doing the dance and everything. And, you know, I feel like that was the first time that yeah. like white dudes like me were like, what in the world's K-pop, you know? And so yeah. like that, it started was the that, conversation. Was that K-pop? That was, that was in the genre of K-pop? Technically, yeah, because he's he was part of, uh, at the time when he released that, he had a whole album, but he released that solo under SM Entertainment um, and they're, arguably the number one entertainment group and they have a lot of people under them including exo yeah, SM, yeah. um yeah, SM. Since does, it then, stand, does it stand for anything do you know i'm not sure um but because i see sme come up as a lot of one of my like the uh, copyright claims oh, for sure for sure <laughs> it's, it's sm yg and jyp are the yeah, three yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah and then of course you know big hit entertainment which is what bts is and they came yeah. out of nowhere um, okay. They really came up from nothing and they surprised everyone. And just from raw talent, they became the number one K-pop group. In my opinion, there's a lot of people who would disagree with me, but I don't see many other K-pop groups that are winning American music, music awards. So it's a really cool thing to start to see. So that yeah, was 20, 2017, 2018, BTS started to win all these awards here in the States. Yeah. And they yeah. suddenly yeah. were on like People Magazine, you know, Vogue, and they're starting to get become like a household name. And people sure. are checking them out. Um, and here you are be like, Psh, I knew about these guys. Right. right. I was like, come on, guys. 2012, I was into this. But anyway, yeah. I mean, even then, even at 2012, <laughs> when I was first learning about and getting into K-pop and whatnot, just getting an exposure to it, K-pop's yeah. been around for decades. And, of course, yeah. I mean, obviously, course, but yeah. um, it's just Korean pop music. It's a, yeah. it's a broad genre. But within that, there's a ton of micro genres, as you know. Um, there's every type of micro genre in American music and every other type of music. Um, but I wanted to ask you, I was listening to some of your music and it's super oh, lit. I appreciate it. Thank you, but man. I, I want to know, like, what would you say you kind of fall under if there's like a couple categories of like micro genres? I would probably say alternative pop. Okay. Yeah. That's probably what I would say. What, I, well, let me ask you this. What would you classify it as? Yeah. That's what I would have said. Yep. Oh, really? Alt pop. Okay, alt -pop. cool. I would have yeah, said alt pop. Kind of, what did you hear? I'm curious. I'm curious which ones you ended up I was up on Spotify. Right? I was jumping around and okay. I, would, I was just watching, um, an interview you just did with someone i can't remember his name i'm, I'm, I'm blanking but i was just watching his interview a recent um, one yeah it was recent um, oh, was it a long one it was really long yeah yeah it was the Ko kofi kofi that was my longest okay. one on the channel yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. it was good it was Thanks, good man he's a cool he's like, a funny guy man yeah oh he God. is i was, was like dude fun. how do i measure up to this guy he's ah! awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no you got a cool personality too man you know no, sometimes so so for people that don't know like majority of almost actually pretty much everybody i meet three minutes backstage it's like i asked everybody yeah. to come in like somewhere between three to three to five minutes so we could just talk, test audio levels so that it's not like oh i can't hear you on a live stream you know what i mean no you so gotta like, get those set up yeah yeah yeah. but but like i'm meeting all these people for the first time like hey man what's going on you know what i mean so it's 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 so hit or miss sometimes it's like you're like i don't know what, yeah. how this guy's gonna be you know what i mean so i'm you glad you're a super chill guy you, it's like you got to cast a wide net because otherwise you're just dealing with like a certain type of person, you know, but yeah, I feel like you got to do that. Um, yeah. But it's, yeah, it's a hit or miss. It's a hit I or love miss. doing these, man. I love, I Fun. love doing the interviews. Yeah. It's, it's cool to meet new people. So my question for you though, is kind of looking through your channel and I see that you only posted one live stream in like the past year. I know. What happened? It went completely dark. Yeah. yeah. I, I pulled out, you know, I made a live stream basically telling people I was going to go on a pause and okay. focus on just things that were important to me at the time, which was I came down here to Maryland. So I just started a brand new job. Um, it was kind of my engineering dream job. Um, nice. What kind of engineering? So I'm in defense. So industrial engineering, um, working in defense, specifically nice. um, cool. some classified programs, but it was some really cool Ooh, stuff okay. that we were working on. And I was thinking, all right, I got to focus on this because like this is the job that I've always wanted as an engineer. Sure. Um, but I also have always wanted to come back to Maryland and kind of plant roots, you know? And so 
I was in the dating scene, you know, all of those little apps, you know, swiping left uh-huh. and right and stuff. And I'm like, I got to meet Mrs. Right. And like it, it, when I'm making videos, that's what I'm doing. You know, like oh, I'm yeah. not focused on anything else. Sure. It's like, I'm sort of like an on off type of guy. Like I can sure. really hyper focus, but then like I'm forgetting to eat. I'm not sleeping right, you know. Forget an interview. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like trying to do a bathroom renovation. Over here. Oh, man. But yeah, so then, then I was like, no, I'm going to focus on this. I'm going to start meeting some ladies. And then I did. And then after a year of dating, we got married just not too long ago. Um, yeah, that's congratulations, man. Thank you. Thank COVID you. COVID wedding? COVID wedding? Or, or it was a COVID, COVID wedding. Yes. COVID I got wedding. the whole vlog. We just need to post it. Oh, sweet, man. Cool. Yeah, but she, uh, cool. she, she's really into YouTube as well. She has a channel. She did the same type oh, of Oh, what YouTube. is her channel? Really? Is she still yeah, posting? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, she posts, she's more active on her Instagram. She makes smaller videos on there. Um, but yeah, no, for sure. Maybe uh, we'll have to get her on the channel, man. Should, you should. Yeah, um, and then anyway. and then you should remind her about the interview. I need to, I need to. <laughs> She'll just be like doing her thing. Uh, but yeah, but anyway, so like, it was kind of like, I don't know. It was, uh, it was like when you meet someone where you're like, we could totally do this thing together. You oh know? yeah yeah for sure man Huge. we both have that passion absolutely you know and so we're like and, and of course that wasn't the foundation of the marriage <laughs> the chemistry of person i mean how funny would that be if our channel doesn't work out does our marriage work out but yeah but like we were thinking like let's settle in let's get settled in the house you know get settled in maryland and then bam let's hit up a like a live stream get an introduction going and start a whole new stream of uh content and so that's what we're doing we're starting back up Great. we just had a live stream the other day on a new um, channel, on which on either of your channels or what? We're gonna rebrand mine to our okay. channel. Cool. But yeah. That's great, man. That's Excited, exciting. Dude. Do you know I'm what really it's gonna be excited. called yet? Can you can you announce that yet? So right now it's under Josh Biner. Her name's Anna, A N A. Um uh but yeah, and so we're thinking Josh and Anna or Josh Anna, if you want to ship. Josh Anna. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so we're we're trying to figure out the name. We're just sort okay. of testing. Okay. Yeah. I just I wanted to kind of, if you had an idea I wanted to kind of get it out there so if anybody's watching oh, they cool. can go Thanks. get it out there and check it out. Figure it out, you'd be the first to know. Oh, say so, yeah, perfect, great, yeah, sounds good, man. Yeah. So my question for you is, what are you listening to on the daily now? Are you still listen to a lot of BTS? Are you? Oh my well, God. not. Let me start. Let me let me let me let me pull back a little. Uh, K-pop as a general. For BTS. sure, for sure. You know, she actually was listening to more K-pop than I have recently because she okay. was a, she was a fan of K-pop even before I was. And okay. She ended up finding, she's from Brazil. She ended up finding me through my reactions because she was making reactions. And so like she she posts her reaction to like BTS dope or what, what have you, just as an example. And in the related video, she's like, who's this other guy? Oh, that's like, funny, man. It's hilarious. And we're like, yeah. oh, hey, we do the same thing. Uh, anyway, the rest is history. Um, and then did you meet on like a dating app too? Or no, did you, no. oh, you, you met through the- you- just we just slid through the dms and instagram basically from your reaction videos yeah jump from wow. youtube to instagram yeah that's wild that's what a story man that's actually pretty crazy it was it was it was definitely meant to be we've been that is so really, cool man what a story so, so yeah. when people say how do you meet how did you meet you say oh we met off youtube yes dude that's what a story man that's so that's basically cool. what happened but you know it's, it's so like when you dip your toe into like the YouTube world, you realize just how much there's there, how much opportunity, how much, how much adventure, how much momentum you can gain. And it's just, you kind of get sucked into it, you know, eventually. But yes. So what did your friends and family say when you started a channel? Well, they were like, what in the world is (laughs) K-pop? But no, I mean, they were super supportive. Um, yeah. I did a lot of vlogs. I would do live streams every week, which had nothing to cool. do with that. And so I was, it was always varied content. Um, but yeah. How no, did, I just how did the it. audience re- receive that? Receive did what? they like the, the, the varied content? Yeah, for sure. Because people that, are, people that are into K-pop, I think it's a certain flavor of people who actually want to get to know you. And it's more of like a familia type of thing, but Interesting. you know, because people that are into K-pop, especially in the States um, or internationally, if you're not in Korea and there's bigger, there's a bigger audience that watches K-pop than mm-hmm. the amount of people in Korea, of course. So mm-hmm. a lot of people are solo and they don't, they don't know anyone else who knows BTS. Mm-hmm. Like it, that mm-hmm. five years ago, if five years ago, if you were to watch BTS dope, uh, you were probably the only That's person in your friend circle. And so yeah. that's why, you know, people like sharing music is something you really want to share with people. Yeah, and of course. And if, so, 
Ooh, that's interesting, man. So that's what sparked the demand for all the reactions that you saw. It's because people could watch their favorite music along with someone else. And feel like they, yeah. And that, that would also make a little bit more, like even add to the depth of like the BTS army, you know what I yes. mean? Like of how they would relate. relate. Cause you, anybody you could walk, you could walk down the street and, and my grandma knows who Taylor Swift is. You know what I mean? But yeah, like, there you go. Like that's fascinating, you know. So you don't feel you feel lonely as a, as a fan of an artist. You, there were a ton it almost, of lonely fans. It almost feels like it, it, it's like a um, an indie band, you know. When you have like oh, an sure. indie band, even though they're not because because they're huge, it's just they're huge all over the place, you know. That's like, it. Except for right, except for your hometown, you know what I mean? Yep. In that's Korea. F- in Korea, they were the they were the Taylor Swift and Justin Bieber of Korea. Yeah. But outside of Korea, it's all indie, you know. So people feel. Would you lonely. debate it still is indie? <sighs> less, definitely less so. Um, I would say BTS is no longer indie, um, but most other K-pop, in my opinion, is. Um, and of course, I've been out of it for a year. And when you're out for even a year's time, so much changes. Um, well, did you it, see Gr- BTS was nominated for a Grammy? Yep, dude, it's yeah, incredible. It's, right. it's yeah, absolutely it's incredible. Like, who would have guessed that? And they came from, like I said, big, big hit entertainment, like a no-name company that basically just had some solo artists that they would help launch and label. But yeah, um, they were the first group that they invested in, and none of them knew each other, and half of them were underground rappers, and. <laughs> Which is great because, like, I mean, remember, I, I watched your review of one of the BTS songs and you were looking through the lyrics. A lot of them are really deep because they're writing their own stuff. They've been oh, sure. writing their own stuff. Sure, They've been sure, writing sure. it for years. And some of them are yeah. incredibly intelligent. Like, yeah. Rap Monsters, he's at, like, savant level IQ. So he writes some really crazy philosophy into his lyrics and stuff. But that, along with their personalities and then the raw performance level, just got them charting. It just got them mm. ranking on the charts. Um, yeah, that's interesting, man. It's it's so fascinating, just the different layers. So I was so I, I just had this interview a couple hours ago with this guy named DJ Gino, who yeah. also has a YouTube channel. He's super into the the uh, uh, the K-pop and the, the BTS world and stuff, and he's Korean and everything. He was mentioning that one of the reasons he thinks, and I'd love to know your opinion on it, because it really blew my mind. Like it's like it's one of those things that you kind of I, I was doing subconsciously, but then it's like when somebody puts words to it, it's like, oh, well, that makes you know what I mean. Yeah. Like so, what he was saying is like part of the reason that BTS is so big, and like they feel so connected to people is because they would just film everything. They would, you know, and, and like you, they vlog everything, and it kind of broke down this facade of like this superstar, and it almost felt like you were friends. You know? Oh what yeah. I mean? And that and was something I, that was success. That was a big success impact. I don't want to cut you off, but like no, that's no, true for every K-pop group, in my opinion, every K-pop group that's reached that BTS level of success, they've been on reality shows. They've been doing these behind the scenes tours and they've been doing like individual vlogs. Some of them even put it into their contracts. Like as I'm saying, you have to be on Ooh. X number of episodes. You have to be wow. going to these fan meetings. Some of them don't even necessarily want to, but they have to per their contract. Because these companies know that's how you rank. You have to wow. connect with your fans. And th- I mean, there's so much controversial stuff. I could just peel back the layers for hours with you. Peel and- them back, man. Peel a couple back. I want to know. <laughs> it's crazy. They'll do things like, for example. So when you um, say they, you say the average or are you talking BTS here? When I'm saying they, right now I'm specifically talking about the types of contracts that these groups sign with, let's say, a company like SM Entertainment. And SM... Mm-hmm would be the most notorious for these types of contracts that sort of, they sort of almost edge on the slave contracts type of mentality where they can't choose what they eat, they can't yeah. choose what they wear, wow. they can't choose the type of uh, friends that they have. They of course can't have girlfriends. Um, so anyone that has a secret relationship with someone, they get kicked out of the group. Um, and they'll even go as far to say that like on this day, you have to record this many personalized videos for your fans so they can sell them like a personalized ringtone or a personalized message or it's really crazy. It's like these fan meets get to be really, really structured because they've got these payment systems. Like, okay, if you pay them $400, you can get a personalized message from your favorite K-pop idol. And if you pay this much money, you can get this from them. It's everything short of just getting their literal underwear. You know what I mean? It's just, it's crazy. And so like, 
a lot of them, a lot of them come out and speak about it after they've left the group. And they'll be like, you know, these are the types of things they had us do when we were not okay with it. And wow. it, get, it gets kind of crazy. It, it can borderline on being sexually inappropriate for a lot of things they make girl groups do. And so it just gets really a uh, wow. gray area. But of course, you're going to get that type of thing with a company that the number one interest in their mind is going to be their bottom line and just making money and profit. So it almost yeah. removes the humanity out of these groups when they're yeah. just trying to thrive and make music. That's all they care yeah. about. But That's really interesting. Now, but so do you think that BTS falls in that category? Because from what I've seen, it seems like it's more, that seems way more organic. Yeah, 100%. And that's what, at the end of the day, people can tell. People aren't stupid. They watch these shows and they can tell when people are being authentic or not. And yeah. everyone's known from the get-go that Big Hit gave them a ton of leniency to do what they want to mm. do, say the things they wanted to say, act the way they wanted to act, and they benefited in spades for that. That's because fascinating. It allowed them to connect with people in a very authentic yeah. way and build this fan base. Yeah. But that, that was only half of the puzzle. The other half was being able to have extremely talented individuals, which they all are. Individually, sure. they can all have successful solo careers. And that's, again, in my opinion. But you see some people like um, XO, the, they're, they're just shedding different members that want to leave because SM kind of has these slave contracts. And so every time they leave, they tend to start their own solo journey. Some of them are more successful than others. Um, but BTS, 100%, they could all be individually successful. A lot yeah. like Big Bang. A lot like who? Big Bang. If you've ever heard know. of them. I don't know. I don't know if I know. They're a popular band. YG band. They're a little bit okay. older and they're not super active, but okay. anymore. Um, yeah, that's fascinating, man. I, I, It's so wild. But like, so so that, that we, I had that conversation with DJ Gino and after that on my youtube because i because i've been breaking down a lot of that like bts stuff on the channel like there's a lot of recommendations from bts stuff on my channel because it's just how youtube works but one of the things that came up was like bts is real or, or, or it was from uh their label so like big hit entertainment or i don't remember what the website is, like that not the the, like the channel is on, on youtube i don't know if it's uh big hit or whatever the case is like okay. their main label that that like you bang bang something tv or do you know what i'm talking about Bang yeah, and TV. Which yeah, Bang Tan TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, thank you. So it has like forty six million subscribers. Like that, that channel, yeah. like that posts a lot of BTS stuff. Is that yep. what is it? Is that their channel? Their their basically. Label? Yeah, that's is their it, label. Like, okay. So if okay. you if you were to look at like um, I don't know, like uh, Girls Generation, they are under SM Entertainment. So SM will release their music video under SM's main channel. Big Hit does have a Big Hit channel, but they also have Bangtan TV, which is like some of the reality shows and a lot of other things. And they can put their music videos on there as well. But which is interesting because like that's very different than the American way of doing it, where it's like Ed Sheeran releases a music video on Ed Sheeran's channel. You right. know what I mean? Which is just fascinating. I'm not saying one is better than the other. It's just, no. it's just interesting to notice. It's really so interesting. I, I think it mirrors the culture because there are cultural differences too. Sure. And so what the the types of contracts that companies in america would make are different than the types of contracts that sure. Korea, it, it, which is different than the types of contracts that chinese companies would make and japanese companies like so I, the other artists on the, that label also post on bang tan tv uh i don't know the answer to that my guess is no um because bang tan is kind of synonymous with bts Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, but BT, yeah. Bang, um, but Big Hit did have and d does have other artists as well. Um, okay. But as far as I knew, they were the only group. I think they have other solo artists. Um, but certainly, yeah. BTS was the most successful. But, so all that to say, though, like it, it was on that channel, and it was literally a two, three, three, two or three minute video of two of the two of the guys in BTS pick it like help one helping the other pick out sunglasses, and that's yep. all there was. And that's I was it. like. This is fascinating. Like, right. you just get to see there behind the scenes. Like, and it nope. was just a conversation. I couldn't even understand it. I forgot that I could probably turn subtitles on. It probably would have translated. Yeah. But I couldn't understand a, two, a, a single thing. But it was right. just fascinating. And I was, my mind was like, wow. And then I found it. Then it led me to another video. And I just started going to this little rabbit hole. It's like, because me as a marketer, musician, like, m m music is business, man. And like, I'm not oh, saying yeah. I do it for, for business. But it just, it helps them connect. And when they connect, people want to listen more. And it's like, it's brilliant. And it's like, and if it, especially if it's authentic, like if you genuinely want to share stuff with your your fans, like that that's the best situation that you could possibly have. Everybody should, but like it's what when you should versus when you want to is a very different situation. Oh yeah. And um, 
it just I, it was fascinating to watch and then it led me to another video it was like this one was longer i didn't watch the whole thing but i kind of scrolled through it and it was 11 minute video of them eating dinner and doing this whole thing while watching oh. the grammy um nominations okay you, know, yep. you could see, you could see when the, the moment that they get nominated for the grammy for for dynamite but it's like them just eating something scrolling through. it's literally and the yeah. top comment oh, yeah. had that. it's wild and it's like you just get to see the the the, the the behind the scenes and it's what even blew my mind even more was the fact that it was on their main channel it's not like some yep. like sub random channel it's like exactly no, th this is who we believe we, the best way we want you to know it's, you know what i mean it's so fascinating it's it just so as much it's like the reality clips are just as much bts content as their music videos they yes. sort of they blurred the line between those two things yeah whereas in sm they kept those very separate and so, so fascinating man and so now everyone is doing that. And there's a lot of groups that I've seen, and I'm not going to name specific names, but they're blatantly just copying the formula that was BTS down to yeah. the type of moves they make, to the sound that oh, they're making, interesting. you know, interesting. down to the types of reality shows. Like I, I would guarantee that these other groups that I'm not naming did the exact yeah. same clips that BTS just put on Bang so TV. Wild. Let me ask you a question on this then. Do you think, so, so for somebody that's familiar with that stuff, do you think there's such a thing as too much content? no i agree with that i say no absolutely i agree I, I i should start asking that to my to everybody I, that should be like a staple question i'd be curious because bro i post a lot on my channel you know what you i do. mean I'm like i'm impressed <laughs> thank you but i but i always i always i'm always curious like other people's perspectives like because people seem to be watching and and i'm just but but then also people are watching other channels i just i, I always it's just interesting yeah. you know I, like i sometimes i wonder like have i created this machine where it's like Right, they're so used to that content that if I ever pull back, it's going to be detrimental. You know, I don't exactly. know. There's, there's only one way to find out. But like, do you do you, are you familiar with Gary Vee at all? A hundred percent, man. I used to like, listen to that guy all there you go. the time. There and you go. That, and he shifted a he shifted a lot of thinking. Me, I agree. That's where I got a lot of. I, there was a period, probably the 2017 to twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen. Uh, I was listening to that guy every single day. For That's like it. probably an hour, I like going like driving everywhere I go. I would listen in in the shower. I was listening like. Well, he he's got he's got a very clear, concise message that yeah. is very hard to argue with. It's stick to your passions, be consistent, grind away, and be humble. That's it, you yeah, know. And you're just exactly. you're just rise and grind, be humble, just keep doing it. Content, 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 upload, you know. And I think the only argument I could make as to whether or not too much would be bad. It's not the quantity is necessarily the type. So if you're really into music, like you are an artist and you're making music, if you suddenly just start posting a bunch of DIY, how to like fix a deck, you know, it, it might throw people off a little bit, you know, thinking mm. like okay, new people that jump on your channel, they're like, what's this guy about? I'm trying to gain my bearings because like you mentioned yeah. marketing, marketing, the first touch point is the most important. So if people yeah. land on your channel for the first time, they don't know you. And so everything that you're showing them vis visually is what they're going to think you are. Yeah. And, and first so impressions last. They do. They, and they're, yeah. they're almost impossible to get away. So, yeah. you know, yeah. it's very valuable to have a consistent brand. And when it comes yeah. to Bangtan TV and BTS, they could make a trillion of these little tiny clips. It'd never be too much, but it's always kind of the same type of like, this is our life behind the scenes. And so they've branded themselves mm. in a certain way. So whether they're picking out glasses or they're watching TV awards and just scrolling on their phone, it's all under the same brand as this is more authentic views on the way they're living their life outside of making the music videos. So yeah, I think they've done it successful successfully. It's so fascinating, man. I love it. It's so, it's so wild. It's so wild. It's a lot Where, of layers to it. Oh, hundred percent. I'm curious. I want it'd be, and there's no way to know unless he like specifically spoke to them, but like, I wonder how much of it was organic, how much of it was like intentional. You know what I mean? Like, Hey, I think this will work. Yeah. Or I or hey, you know, oh, I just somebody posted this and oh wow, it got a million views. Okay, let's post another. You know what I mean? It, it, there's no way to win. No, it's just it's yeah. working now. Obviously, you know what I mean. And it's so it's so fascinating. But it's uh, I, it's always a combination. Yeah, yeah. You know, like with with them, I think they when they came into the scene, there was a very well established um, ranking, if you will, on who were the top ten in K-pop, and it was hard to argue with because it was just based off the number of viewers when they drop an MV. And so people knew who the idols were. They had idols, they had a lot of idols and, and they had idols even you know, here in the States. Like they, you ask them who their favorite idol is, a lot of them will say Justin Bieber. Um, mm -hmm. And so they've been watching that, but specifically they're, they're very in tune with the types of things that, that people talk about in Korea and the mm -hmm. types of way they act, um, the different little things they do. 
uh, the mat down to the mannerisms. Like you'll notice if you watch, let's say EXO versus Girls' Generation versus Big Bang versus BTS, all of them do some of the same types of like cute little mannerisms. They're all copying each other. So it's like almost like a trademark um, that's unique to the Korean culture that's to the point where they have a name to describe it. It's called Eggio. It's, it's cute little expressions. You know, if you ever see them doing this or like doing little like dancey things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, pe people don't do that here in the States. We just don't, but they do. And so they didn't invent a lot of that stuff, but what they had was a perfect formula at the right time. And they marketed themselves like you said, perfectly with doing these behind the scenes videos, all that culminated to their inevitable success. And now everyone's trying to copy that formula. Huh. That's super fascinating, man. It's very, very, very interesting perspective. Where do you see, where do you see K-pop and, and, and that whole industry going in the future? Yeah, I mean, I'm jaded because like I was multi-fandom. There's a lot of people who have opinions and they watch one group and they're laser focused and they start extrapolating from what they've seen. But I was looking at everyone um, for the better part of five years. And from what I've seen, I think it'll continue to grow. I think it'll continue to be a household name. There will be another BTS that's more successful. Anyone number one doesn't stay number one for more than a couple of years. And again, that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, but what I also think is that it's becoming a tiny bit saturated. And that's not just a reflection of the number of reactors, because back in the day, there was maybe when I started, there might have been 100. Now there's probably more like 10,000. So okay, sure. it's been 10 x And so you look at 10 x on 10 x there's so many groups coming out. There used to be back in 2012, 2013, I remember when it was like, when there was a new group coming out, people knew about it, even if it wasn't a big group, because it's like the new person, the new kid on the block. Um, and it was maybe, I'd say once every couple months, someone came out and debuted and maybe 20% of those were successful. Um, and these are round numbers that I'm just estimating. Sure, 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 sure. Nowadays, nowadays, I would say there's a new group every week and I would follow mm. these charts on Reddit and some of these Reddit posts that people would actively update with all these mods. And what they would do is look at who are, what's a schedule of the year and who are all the new people that are going to debut in that year. Um, really? And some of them, yeah, and there, it was an active ongoing list of, of new K-pop groups. And so I would watch that because me as a, as a reviewer, I wanted to be wow. on that. Dude, you're crying. You, you, you knew your stuff. Good for you. Y you I have appreciate to be. that. I you know, appreciate it. A... Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> well, Actually, yeah, I mean, very, very often I'll go to like, like type in like artists releasing uh, uh, new albums in, in June. You know what I mean? Yes. I'm kinda, okay. Oh, okay. So-and-so on the 21st. Oh, okay. So, yep. so good for you, it, it's, it's really difficult to be on top of everyone when you're multi-fandom, when you're not just looking mm -hmm, at one mm -hmm. group. Because if you're exactly. BTS, you already know exactly when BTS is dropping an album. Mm -hmm. But how do you know when the other 20 are? But I would watch these. The point in bringing that up was I would watch this over time for years and years. I would watch the 2016. And then when 2017 rolled around, they come out with a new list. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes they come out with it even earlier, like in December or January. But, um, eventually, if you were to look at that same list today in 2021, there are so many groups debuting every week that I'm thinking, are there, is there enough demand for this? Or are a lot of these going to get kind of lost in the noise, unfortunately? Sure. Um, so if you ask me what the future is, I think it'll continue to get saturated because, you know, when there's a huge amount of monetary benefit like BTS winning all the awards and getting all these book, all these deals, marketing deals, they can just show up places and no. make a lot of money. Now every company is thinking, well, I'd love to start a BTS. Let's do that. Um, so it's I'd snowballs. wonder, I'd wonder, I agree with you, but I'd wonder also the alternative is like, so bedroom producers would be like the alternative, right? Like, you know, you mm. had your in the early 2000s you had you know puff daddy and you know Pete, or maybe even earlier the 90s like you had a handful like the puff daddies the dr dre's the nope. you know the, these big guys uh scott storch we're getting this is all a little bit more hip-hop but like for sure i'd be curious like those guys were making the millions and tens of millions of dollars i wonder if while there is more saturation there is more success but less uh number ones you know what I mean? Spread like out. in a sense, spread in the out success, a spread out success. Would you, exactly. would you say it's synonymous with the saying like a rising tide raises all ships type of thing? Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I guess so. Yeah, I, I guess because you look at, look, so my, my biggest argument towards that, I think, because it's like, you can argue it either way. Like, and not even me, can. I can argue it either way. I think that it's like, 
if you so if you're a bedroom producer and you produce one song a year, like you, it's very unlikely that you're gonna go anywhere. If yes. you're a bedroom producer and you're grinding and you're really working, filming all your content, really putting stuff out there, like really working, you can. I I debate you can make a living. You know, are you gonna be a millionaire? Maybe, but maybe not. You know what I mean? Right. But there is a lot more of a chance that you did thirty oh, yeah. years ago. Oh, you know, yeah. when it when it cost fifty thousand dollars to record two songs, you know what I mean. And then, well, even if you had the money to record the two songs, who's gonna hear it? Because you had to get it on a radio station, and somebody had to. It's so different than it's just going viral on YouTube. You know what I mean? Because because I could text it to you right now. You know, so what I mean? true. It's, We're in the digital age, so the barrier to entry is no longer mm. all these prices for for getting. You know. It, a lot of times they would pay people to like, could you have me on your show and I'll show my, my boy band and they'll talk about their music. And instead of them getting paid when you're in the beginning, no one knows you, you gotta, you know, shell out. But nowadays there's no cost to starting a, a Twitter page or a YouTube yeah. channel. And so, it's, it's exactly. and I would even argue that the, the amount of demand, potential demand is still going to be the population of the world, which is constantly expanding because there's so many countries mm. don't even know about K-pop yet. And so sure. I don't, I think there's an unlimited demand, especially for something as integral to our culture and humanity as music, but the supply will continue to increase. I really don't see the supply ever exceeding demand. Um, I would agree with what you said that there will be less number ones. It'll be much more just instead of a top 10, it'll be like a top a hundred. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I, I see it continue to get more successful. It's the, it's the Halalu wave is the Korean wave that they describe. And huh. it's, it just keeps growing and growing. I'd also wonder if, if success might also be short, more, more short lived. You know mm. what I mean? Like, Ooh, you're like, right. Yeah. I don't know how long, not, not necessarily for them. Like, I still think there will be the groups that like start and just go like yeah. the Ed Sheeran's, the, the Taylor Swift's, the mm -hmm. M&M's mm -hmm. like these guys, like, and even like more, more, more recent, like, like, um, I don't know. I, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head, but these people that like started a career and like, they just, they're going to stick around. You know what I mean? Um, it, actually it'd be hard to say for anybody in the past couple of years, cause I'm, I'm defining on people that have been around for a while. You know what I mean? Like even, even lesser known, like groups like the 1975, they're not necessarily winning Grammys, but they've been sure. around for 10 years. You know what I mean? Like, yep. They, 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 people know their, their name, you know, they, they do. I think, I think that the, the, what I'm really talking about is like the groups that make it a living out of it for years is what I'm talking about. As opposed to, I debate, I wonder if like, there's, you, you see a lot of these guys that have this once one hit wonders, essentially. I feel like there's, there's a, 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 even more one hit wonders now. Yeah. I would they, agree they with can't that. sustain the, the, they just can't sustain it. I don't know why, but they can't, you know, there will always be the M and M's. But yeah. I think you're right that the one hit wonders are becoming more common. Um, yeah. As, a, as, a, as yeah. a general rule of thumb. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. No, for sure. And what I also see happening this is my own personal prediction. A lot of people disagree with me. So this is my oh, opinion. okay. Here we go. I'm the fun for this one. Here this is a got. controversial opinion. But in my opinion, I think music's going to continue to expand internationally, not just K pop. Like, forget about K pop for a second. There are so many talented individuals that haven't been tapped internationally. I was looking at, I, I spent a couple months just looking at Vietnamese pop. And it's like such an interesting niche to delve into. And there's probably sure. like, it was like five reactors, like music commentators and doing that. And so it was like an easy thing to tap into. But I noticed there's so many people in there that I was like, this guy's like, this would be the new BTS if people knew about them. Mm. You know, I could see like their vocals and their choreography and, and, and just everything about them. I was like, mm -hmm. this is going to blow up eventually. And they do. And they're still blowing up. But people don't know what B-pop is still. So there's mm. there's this barrier right now, and and now I, that's I would completely actually subscribe to that because P pop is 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 getting big, yes. uh, Pinoy pop, which is uh, Fili nope. Filipino pop. Dude, yes, it is. The Philippines are blowing up. They like, are. There's so many artists coming out of the P Philippines at the moment, and like getting pretty recogni like like worldwide recognition as they know? should. Their, like, their absolutely. vocals are incredible. Absolutely. And like the, ta uh, the ta Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. They, I mean, just think about it. You know, it's like every everyone exists on a spectrum of, of ability, you know. And so mm -hmm. if you take a group of people, they think about in China, they got a billion people. In India, they got a billion people, you know. So if we got artists here in the U.S., what are we at, 300, 400 million? So, like, they're going to have that many Justin Bieber's over there in the same ratio. They just haven't oh, been sure. found. They haven't been yeah. found, and they don't, they don't have a platform. And they're, 
you know, in, in China, they can't even get on Twitter because it's blocked by their government. Yeah. So it's like, there's, <laughs> once it finally opens up a little bit more, we'll be able to get to see all these different people. Um, but right now they're hiding, yeah. like yeah. from no fault of their own. I, I want to find Chinese Justin Bieber, yeah. <laughs> but he's out there. He's out. I'm going to yeah. find him. Dude, I could see you being like the next, in a, in a good way, the next uh, uh, Scooter Braun. <laughs> finding oh, these man. finding these you know uh, uh global yeah like not necessarily global superstars i guess would be the word i'm looking for like not necessarily the american one like that you find on youtube but i'm saying you find this guy in some small little town in vietnam and now he's playing madison square garden bro. i would love to do that i would love to because you go into doing that I would love to, I've been in the Philippines and like 90, yeah. 98% of the Philippines is just dirt roads. And like, yeah. you know, so, you, but they have cell phones. So they're like posting on Instagram and they're posting on like Facebook and stuff. So I'm like, if I could just create like an award show, you know, oh. and, and, ju and just start saying anyone's available, anyone's welcome. Everyone come, just post your own 30 mm. seconds of you singing. Um, I have thought about that, exactly what you're talking about because it's a whole untapped country for talent. Yeah. And these yeah. people, like, they need to be uh, tapped into. There's so much talent. I just get passionate talking about it. But Yeah, I could see you doing it, man. Like managing all these different artists and stuff. That'd be a dream. Well. That'd definitely yeah. be a dream. So but when yeah. do you think when do you think you're going to uh, start posting again, like, frequently on your channel? Once a week, starting the live stream that we just did yesterday. We already filmed a couple. She's filming cool. right now, actually. Oh, um, no way. That's so funny. Yeah. Let's say what's up. It's, it, it's Anna, right? Not Anna? Yep. Anna. Anna. Yep. That's okay. just a Brazilian name for Anna. Or Anna. I want to have her on, man. Uh, we got to do an Anna. Anna. Absolutely. Anna I, well, we're both into it. We both love doing it. We started at the same point, just reviewing music, and we both went in different directions. And so we're trying to figure out what we're going to look like together as a cohesive unit. Yeah. Uh, does Does your wife have her pulse on, uh, like, on Brazilian music? Uh, she would have more than I do, uh, uh, for sure. Yeah. She 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 mentions some. For sure. Do you know of any? I all? don't personally know. Okay. Okay. I'm just curious. That was one of the subscribers questions. Uh, okay. That's wild. So, so where do you recommend people? I, well, we're going to wrap that up in a sec. But my last question for you is where do you recommend people go to find new artists? Ooh. They want to so so pretend like, pretend I, I'm like this kid that like, I want to be the guy that'd be like, Hey, Joey, you heard of so-and-so like, yeah. where do they go to find them? You see them first in just no name channels. That's where you see them. I think like reaction channels or like not just that, but just like um I found a lot of the new artists that blew up into what they are today in just the related videos. Just by going through sure. the wormhole of YouTube. I found mm -hmm. some through Spotify recommends. I've seen some, oddly enough, through Pandora, you know, where you just go and shuffle and they just sure, start sure, giving sure, you sure. stuff. I'm like, who's this guy? And I just Google them and like nothing comes up. Um, that's a really good question. <laughs> it's actually really funny. Yeah, no, that, I mean, that's a great answer right there. It's a great answer. And actually, so I lied. This is my last question for you. <laughs> okay, no, <laughs> I'm, worries, I'm no worries. I'm curious. Uh, I'm curious what your opinion, like how, what would you define as reaction channels? Like what is a reaction channel for you? Oh, we're lagging a bit. I don't know why. Yeah, 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 no worries. I mean, as long as my audio is still coming through. Yeah, I think we're good. All right, cool. You could ask, is it live? You could ask people what, if it's lagging or not. Yeah, I think we might be, but I don't know what the issue just happened to be. Yeah, it's... Uh, Topical, we'll difficulties. keep going. We'll, we'll just... We'll, we'll, Testing. Yeah, we'll just keep it going for now. I think we should be fine. Right. We'll wrap it up in a sec. What was your question again? I'm sorry. Uh, if you were to define reaction channels, why do you think they're so popular? Oh yeah, no. So reaction channels are popular just because of the sheer number. They're easy to make. They take almost no effort. <laughs> you just sort of, hey guys, today we're gonna watch blah, blah, blah. It doesn't mean anything and you could be anyone. Uh, I think the reason they became so popular when it came to K-pop is because people needed to have someone to share something with. It was just sharing music, you know? And, and, and it, like you said, it was indie outside mm. of Korea. But I think they're easy to make. So a lot of people start out making reaction channels because it's like you already have your content spelled out for you. You're not making a yeah. vlog where you're like, I have to go find something interesting to do. You know, I'm trying to say, so like if you just do a reaction channel, it's almost like it's stealing because you're just like, I'll find someone else doing something interesting and let me talk about it. You know, it's like, I don't know. Yeah. So and I, then on the other hand, what would you say though? Like, why do you think they're popular for people to watch? 
do you think it's just like music commentary? Do you think it's group in numbers? Like, what do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah. I think that um, nowadays with just the statistic alone of how many people don't have parents in their family, how many people have less and less siblings that they're living with, when you normally, you and I growing up, you know, you, you would almost watch things with your family all the time. You're in a room of people watching things. Nowadays, everyone's on their phone, in their bed, in a closed door, alone, just slowly succumbing wow. to mental illness. And so they're trying to find someone to share something with and reaction wow. channels are an outlet for that. So that's my that you blew, opinion. That is so fascinating, man. It's what That I is think. so interesting. That is such a great answer. I love that is so interesting. You blew it my should, mind right yeah. there. It's Arkham's razor, in my opinion, because it's like the most simple ex explanation is probably the one that's more accurate. But what's Arkham's razor? It's a it's a philosophical idea, basically just saying whatever whatever theory requires the least amount of assumptions <laughs> is probably right. Um, but that's not always true. But it's a good way to think about like why is something the way it is. It's like well, what would make the most sense. Um, but anyway. Dude, you bloom. That's interesting. That is so fascinating. Um, yeah, I was just reading a comment over here, but about somebody agreeing with you. Um, Dude, can I ask yeah. you a question? I know sure, you. Sure, sure, sure. Because I was like, I got questions for this guy. I'll, I'll text oh, you later. No, but, um, I mean, hey, we can, I wanted to ask you. So, what are your plans? Like, do you, do you have like because people that are produced, people making music, like I've met so many people they're always working on something. They're working on like a grand plan. They're working on different projects, yeah. but they're all going towards something. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, what would be your one and five year plan? Like what's your, <laughs> your passion? That's so funny you say that. Cause I actually posted a video set yesterday saying, I don't set goals. Oh, why I don't set goals? <laughs> uh, oh no, I, I have, I, I'll actually explain that. I have dreams. Okay. I, I, I have a trouble saying like goals because like, my goal when I first became, so I dropped out of, mu out of college to do music full time, writing songs and stuff. I thought I was going to be the next Ed Sheeran in, in three years. You know what I mean? I, I thought it was, and then it didn't happen, obviously, that was seven years ago. Now we're starting to see some serious progression in this past year. Um, and I'm enjoying, but I'm enjoying the process. And what I've yeah. said what I'm, in that video is essentially saying, like, I have, I still have that dream, but my timeline yeah. was kind of off. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, yeah. So it's like, my goal, like the end, end, like the end goals, like I want to sell Madison Square Garden, now, man. Like I would, that's the goal. There we and, go. like, and like all this is like kind of pointing back to that. Like it's like you know, I, be, like building relationships, to, like to, yep. like it's also keeping my ears fresh with reactions and stuff, hearing new sure. ideas. Um, oh, that's a really cool synth line. Oh, oh, that's you know, like, but also just creating relationships with people online, and it's all it's all pointing back to music, you know. Yep. And then, honestly, I was just saying this in a live stream a couple of days ago. I would love to have this music career, tour the world, play music, like make money from the songwriting and stuff. And in the end, have like be like Tudo Talks Tonight. You know what I mean? Like the next love Jimmy it. Fallon. Because I it. love, I love this. I love it. Oh, I have yeah. this show called Drinking with Jacob. Um, and it's, it's I saw Jacob. that. Dude, <laughs> I want to I wanna do that. Let's do that. <laughs> okay, we'll do that. even more fun. We got to do it. Absolutely, man. I love that and I, it's so i love talking with people my it's funny it's so funny bro i've always always been told you ask so many questions and now here i am literally making a living asking people questions you know and it's like it's just funny how life works out like it's just like i love it it's so it's so good man well you didn't compromise and you stuck to what you wanted to do in your passion and that's the key you don't know when it's going to happen but i feel like when i've looked at all these different groups and all these different people youtubers i know so many different youtubers doing different I types agree. of things not just music and the number one common denominator i've seen is not even how good they are it's were they consistent I completely and were they grinding cuz I... you eventually do you know you, you like on youtube i'm sure you would agree with me you'll make 10 videos in a row and not see a ton of growth but there's something about that one random video you made and then all these new subs pour in. You're like, what happened? And then you realize 100%. someone shared your video. So it's like that big break comes, but if you work for it, it's a 100%. momentum thing. And, and I think that um, it, there's a lot of factors as to why some people are, are blessed enough to do it. Because like, it's, I think I completely agree. It's the people that last the longest and work the hardest. But some people just, it's not feasible because they have, they, they I was blessed in the fact that like, I was able to, you know, do guitar lessons on the side for 10 years so that I could fund my fund it. Like 
I was able to do that where some people just don't have that. And like, that's why they might not, they, they might've made it had they been another year or two, but it's just like sure. circumstances didn't allow them to do that. You know what I mean? And, Agreed. And, 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 Agreed. So, and, and, but you so really wanted to do it. That's the difference. You could have, you know, putting in guitar lessons, that was probably a lot of work over that much time. Yeah, and I guess. there could have been 20 other people like you who were like, I just don't have time for that. I got this job. I got this thing. I'm trying to get a degree. You know what I'm saying? So if, like, if you if you don't really want to do it, you'll find any excuse not to. But if you really want to, you'll find any excuse to do it. Interesting. You know, but I, I'm not trying to like say that because like 100%, I agree with you. There are 100% people in circumstances that just can't. Um, but yeah. yeah, I totally agree. It's It's grinding the longest, rising the earliest and you get a break. It happens. I agree. And that's, that's, that's one of the platforms that I want to have from this. I'm glad we're actually talking about this because that's one of the platforms I want to have on this channel is like, uh, I, I want to be super authentic and super, um, raw with people. And that I, very often I'll just be like, this is how much money I'm making from YouTube. This is how I'm doing. Because it's like, I want to show people like, if you do, if you follow the steps that I follow or I did, like, why can't it be you too? You right. know what I mean? I'm not saying you're gonna make millions of dollars. I'm not saying you oh. might you might never be able to do anything. But it's like well, it's never been who's more to realistic. say you can't. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Who, exactly. There's so because, many low hanging fruit things too. Like if you ever watch Gary Vee, which of course you have, there's really low hanging fruit. Like anyone can look for a certain niche on a product like shoes and be like, I know these shoes are expensive and I can sell them for X amount on eBay. Then go check out the yard sales and get it. But that yeah. takes work and work is uncomfortable and people don't yeah. like doing that. So they come up with excuses. And I, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm like excuse central over here. I haven't <laughs> uploaded in a year, you know, but I was genuinely doing things, but I could have still been doing like a live stream one hour a week. I could have fit that in. You know, but I, I like Netflix too. And so like uh, things happen. Bro, you, know you gotta saying? stream Netflix while you're watching it with the crew. <laughs> I should. I should. Oh, I'm glad. But yeah, dude, it, it's it's a journey. It's a journey. It and it the is. more the more you sacrifice, because it is a sacrifice to get to where you are today, it took sacrifice. And, 100%. and the, I feel like the more you're willing to give to this this future goal or dream, mm -hmm. you know, the more likelihood you'll attain in it. But it's so fascinating then to try to find the balance between it too, because you could spend all day, all night, and it's like, no, I also have a wife, and I also have a dog who needs to go for a walk, and it's like right. finding that balance too. It's tough. It, it's an everyday thing, you know. It's yeah, an everyday 100%. thing. A hundred percent. You know, hundred percent. You're married too, right? I am. Yeah, we've been married for two and a half years. Hey, look at you! I'm gonna call yeah. you up for marriage advice. Ah, <laughs> do it, bro. A hundred percent. Me and my wife have been together for. We just celebrated ten and a half, like ten years Woo! in October. Damn, what took yeah. you so long? Well, you're young. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we started dating when we were fi we were 15. Whoa. So, yeah, oh we're high school God. sweethearts. Was that like sophomore year of, of high school or? That's exactly what it was. I was a sophomore. She was a junior. Damn. And uh, yeah. High school sweethearts. That's awesome. We made, it, we made it through college and everything, bro. Actually, I don't. I was on the table. It's on the table over there. I just uh, brought it out to show the subscribers. I still have the, uh, the frame. The f our first date and first kiss movie ticket Dude. stuff. <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. Oh, man. I love it. I love it. That's, so and that's gonna be more valuable to you than your 100k plaque and your mm. 1 million plaque and all those mm. things. Yeah, it's yeah. just because that's the stuff that you'll actually be. Uh, super that matters. For. Yeah, that exactly. Matters. Yeah, it's true. 100. It's so true, bro. Dude, this has been a lot of fun. I'm glad it you has been it. a lot of. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Any 100%. last things you wanna we wanna share with anybody? So you're definitely gonna start posting more often. Yep. Yeah. Hold me to it. Hold ah, me to I'll, it. I'll give you a count. Here we go. All That's right. Number one. Number two. The only other thing I'm gonna say is that doing what I'm doing, doing what you're doing, what we're doing right now has never been easier. Mm -hmm. And it's literally like if you have a phone, you can do it. And everyone mm -hmm. has a phone. Yeah, I started just recording on my phone with reactions, and then we bought uh, me it. Me too. Really? Me too. Dude, dude I, I like my first. Uh, I didn't start filming on a camera until September of twenty. Maybe a little. Yeah, no, I didn't buy a camera until September of twenty twenty. So oh I, gosh. and I hit ten k uh, October of twenty twenty. So I was probably around like nine k around there somewhere. Wow. You know, eight or nine thousand subscribers before I even you know bought a camera. You were grinding on that cellular device, dude. And do you want to hear something ridiculous? Dude, okay. look at my first 900 videos. They're all vertical. Every dude. Single Bro. I, dude, I had, well, I had a theory. I had a theory. Don't <laughs> don't hate the theory. Okay. My theory, I'm, I'm, I'm a Gary V sub. So I, I, um, I 
uh, was I, 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 and I love I love analytics. I love stuff like that. Like I'm I'm a business guy and a musician at sure. the same time. So like, eighty percent of all content, including YouTube, is streamed on the phone. So mm-hmm. I figured, why not make it as accessible? So, so like, if why not make it accessible? I could watch it right here like this. I don't have to, I don't have to turn the phone to see anything. Got it. You know, Got and it. It, it in theory it should have worked. Did it? Probably not. You know what I mean? So, but you know what? People still watch the videos. You know what I mean? That's so, the thing. It, it's like for that, I would say it's whatever method gets you started, whether it's like just filming vertically. hundred percent. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just 100%. find that time of day, find that method, find that thing, and then just keep doing it. Couldn't agree more. hundred percent. Anyway, dude, I, Appreciate I love you, bro. Thank you so yeah. much for coming. It's my pleasure, bro. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, go definitely